My first experience with natto was this natto and raw quail egg sushi that I had in Japan. And my Western palate was not quite ready to handle it. But I found recently a much more palatable type of natto, which is this website, natto.dev. It's a free form code editor where you write your code in this canvas, kind of like a design tool rather than in files. And it's created by Paul Shen. I've been following the progress on Twitter a little bit, and it's really impressive. I really like the idea of a free form code editor, and I think this could be the future of programming. My brain kind of enjoys laying things out spatially like this rather than in files. And I can't quite do all my programming within this tool, but it's useful for certain kinds of things and playing around. And I think it's one of the best attempts at this sort of freeform code editor that I've ever seen. So let me walk you through a short example of how you can use this tool. And I'm gonna be leaving out a lot of what it can do. So I encourage you to come check it out, nato.dev. You can look through the examples, try it yourself. There's a lot of cool features packed into this. And I recommend following on Twitter. I'll put all the relevant links in the description. All right, here's how Nato works. The main thing is these eval panes and you can click and drag to draw one. And then you can like evaluate some code right here. I'm gonna make a little thing that takes some text. So I'll use it, there's this option for a text pane and I'm gonna put some URLs in it. Put a few URLs. And then what you can do is you can hook these up to each other. So I'm gonna name this um, URL text. You can hook that up to here and you can see it's like an input URL text. Now if I type URL text, it's a reference to that text value. And what I wanna do is split this into an array. So I'm gonna say split and I'll split it on new lines. So now I have an array of each line from the text there. And then I'll call this raw URLs. And I'm gonna create a new pane from that. So basically raw URLs is the input into another eval pane. And this one I'm gonna say raw URLs dot map normalize. But I don't have a function called normalize. What I wanna do is normalize these URLs using a NPM package called normalize URLs. So you can import npm packages here. So you make another pane that's an import pane and it's called normalize URL. And it's so cool because when you do this, you immediately see everything that's exported by this package. Like if I were to put a different package here, like react, you can see it exports like a bunch of stuff. Or let's try one more like nano ID. You can just take a look at it and you can see what it exports. It makes it really easy to explore these things. Um, so I don't need these. But this one, it just has a default export. And so you can click this default to checkbox to say I just want to use the default one. And I could give this a name and then drag it to where I want to use it. Or you can check global and then you have to give it a name. So I'll call it normalize. And now that is defined globally this function. So over here where I have normalize, it now is defined as the result of the default export of normalize URL package. And so you can see what the normalize URL uh, package does. It takes these input URLs that like don't have www on them, or if they do, um, you know, if you put like a trailing slash, for example, it normalizes them, cleans them all up, makes them into nice, pretty URLs. Okay. So let's go from this, which will be, um, I'll just call it URLs, my normalized URLs. And I'm gonna make another eval pane. Okay, and this one I'm also gonna map and I'm gonna make a function here that's gonna return a string. So you can see there's all those strings. And what I can do is I can actually put HTML here. And then, so this is an array of HTML strings, but I'm gonna join those. And then you can change the settings here in the eval pane that you want the output to be HTML. Set string as inner HTML. So I'll do that. And now you can see that it actually output something. Let's say style equals color red. Cool, so this, this is like actual HTML now, so I can make like a view and what I actually want to do here is 
So I'm mapping the URLs. So I want a reference to the URL and I'm going to say a href equals URL. And then inside of here, I'm going to say also the URL. And let's say style equals display, I'm going to say flex gap 10 pixels. And then I'm going to put a image tag here. And what's this image tag going to be? I'm going to create another eval pane and I'm going to define a function there that will be called get favicon URL. And that will take in the URL. Okay, so let's make that pane. I'll call it get favicon URL. And so here I'm going to define a function. Uh, I'll just do it like this. Um, URL. And there's this special Google URL that you can use. It looks like this. So let's make this one of these template strings. And then here I'm going to put the URL. All right. So this is like a special Google provided URL that will return back the favicon for a given URL. So if you put domain equals, and then you put a domain name here, it'll give you back the favicon of that domain. So I'm just making a function that just sticks URL into this URL. Sorry, that's kind of confusing. But I've named this function get favicon URL. I'm going to connect it into here. So now this is actually defined because it's one of the inputs. And now I've got my resulting list of links with the favicons. And it kind of cascades through all these panes. So if I come back here and I say imba.io news.ycombinator.com, they all show up here. Cool. So that's a very basic example of what you can do in Nato. And I think it's so cool that you can just break apart all these things. There's no files. So whenever you want to create a new thing, you just draw it on the canvas and you can place it wherever you want. You can move all around. You can zoom in and out. And it's fun to be able to see and kind of inspect and modify the flow of things through all these different panes.